Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. everyone and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host Pauline and it is finally the best time of the year. The <laughs> the NBA season has officially begun and it's gone off to a quite I don't know for it did, I guess it really depends on who you are. It depends on who's your team, it depends on who's your favorite player, but it's been off to a shocking start, I guess we can say. Um and in this episode I wanted to discuss <laughs> the shock factor of the start this past week and how exciting it's been for a lot of us and how um scary it may be for a few of you out there depending on who you are um like i said depending on who you're cheering for and depending on who you think is going to who it is who, whatever whether you have a favorite team or a favorite ball player or if you're just a fan of the game in general or if you're a diehard whoever fan it's been a shocker so um I want to discuss, of course, in this episode, my first episode back um, since the season has started is um, the championship rings, the Cavaliers rings, um, how Joe Kim Noah felt about it, how the Cavaliers felt about it, including King James and J.R. Smith, our guy that we've been <laughs> kind of like worried about all um, summer and everything like that, as well as uh, little Bow Wow, Shad Moss, um, whatever you guys call him, Bow Wow. I'm not quite sure. He also got to, you know, try it on for size, which I thought was kind of whatever, you know, I don't know, whatever. So, um, <laughs> so I wanted to discuss the championship rings as well as discuss, um, the big men of the league and how the league we know, and we've been talking about the league changing. We've been talking about the speed of the game changing. They're implementing new technology to help the game run faster, but then also players in general are changing and they're becoming more versatile as well as um, just how the game is changing and how, because I know that a lot of people, including myself, I was kind of like interested to see what was happening because over summer, somebody that I value his sports perspective and his sports opinion, especially when it comes to basketball, he surprised me because he was telling me that basketball is not a game where height matters. And, you know, and that doesn't matter how tall or how short you are, you can play professional basketball. And I was like, kind of intrigued by that opinion. And then, of course, you know, I have always thought the taller, the better, right? You know, when you see a guy walking in the street or walking in the mall and things like that, and especially like me for myself as a girl who's kind of tall, I'm five nine, so I guess that's pretty tall. People always ask you, oh, do you play ball? Because you're so tall. Or you see a tall guy and you automatically assume that he's pro, you know? <laughs> and so when I was, you know, I just want to talk about how the game is making big guys, Anthony Davis types, like true like centers are no longer like the age of the true center is changing and what that means to be a center and what it means to be 6 11 and higher uh taller <laughs> and taller um what that means for the game and uh, how according to this past week whether it's a big deal or not so um that those are some things that I wanted to talk about this episode as well as dive into um and Golden State Warriors and the Cavaliers, of course. And then um, there's some other little things that I want to get into. So like I said, so I wanted to start talking off, start off discussing the championship ring. Now, the Cavaliers started off like they were the kickstart of the season. 
and raising their 2016 championship banner. And if you were at the Quickens Arena, you guys got a um, championship shirt, which I thought was really, really cool. They had them all for the fans and everything like that, which was really cool. I love it when places that you go for like a sporting event and they give you t-shirts. I love that. It's my favorite. I love getting free t-shirts. I, who doesn't like free anything? But I love getting free t-shirts. And there's times where I'm like, when I was in college, before I worked for our athletic department and stuff like that, when I would go watch games, watch the boys basketball games and things like that, I was always trying to get there early um, once our team started getting like really good. Because when I first started going to college, um, our team was like decent. So they didn't really A, give a lot of giveaways and B, um, you, if they did have a giveaway, you didn't have to really like fight for it because not that many people went to the games, but whatever. So anyways, but I love getting free t-shirts and things like that. And then um, now remember, we have been kind of discussing this championship ring. I want to say two or three episodes ago when we were talking about um, who, you know, whether Coach Blatt would get a ring, whether he would not get a ring. And then we followed up with that. And so now the infamous ring has been unveiled um they have it they're wearing them they're really really nice but one thing that has been um kind of like the key point with this ring which is really cool and that has been cause for a lot of conversation is um of course they're huge encrusted with diamonds they're they're just blinged all the way out may have you um they look gorgeous i think and i can't imagine what it will look like in life you know and they're huge huge rings which and it's interesting because they look huge on the players hands and the players don't have normal sized hands you know because like the guys are really big and they're they're like strong like man ball playing hands and they still look like a really good size on their hand you know and then of course usher raymond he had his because he um is into the calves he uh, the, the the ownership of the calves he has um, a stake with them as well they they're they're really cool they have the 2016 on the sides you can check it out online you can look um richard jefferson posted his to snapchat which was really cool but the main thing that has caused ca caused quite a conversation excuse me i don't know why i was just getting like a caw caw I, I couldn't get it out um is the underside of the ring so it's really really cool and i thought this was kind of i, I liked this feature of the ring so the band has the record of the series it's just so nice so it it's t to remember how they came back from three and one and that they beat the warriors sorry if you're a warriors fan i'm rubbing it in for just a moment but they have to have their moment okay and i like that feature of the ring because each ring of course is unique throughout all the championships and through all the um rings that have ever and ever sport there's always something unique about them when it comes to this team specific and so i thought that that was really cool um, that they had that feature on the ring and a lot of people have been discussing it that three in one It's a really nice touch. I think it looks really really nice and I think it was a nice way To incorporate that record because that was a historic thing that they did You know, we talked about that before you can go back and listen to that episode too. how they came back and they literally made history and Coming back three and one. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, like I said, you could check out the ring online. There's lots of pictures. You can look at the, there's also some plates on the inside of the ring. Like the, the ring has features on every side, the inside, the outside, every part of the ring is designed and really, really nice and has a meaning to that team and to the championship run that they had. Joe Kim Noah, he was cracking me up because, um, so they played against the Knicks, which I mean, they opened up against the Knicks 115-84. The Knicks, um, we're going to get into them and how they performed right when we come back from this break because, like I said, it was a shocker. The opener, opening week, the season opening week, these last few games have been a shock, whether you're shock happy or shock scared. Um, and so <laughs> I want to discuss the Knicks when we come back from this um, quick break. But Joe Kim Noah, he was interviewed and he was like, it kind of confused me what he said because he was like, they were discussing him, you know, his team being a part of that opener and having to deal with the ring ceremony and the banner ceremony before the game and all of that, whatever. And he was like, it's cool, but they're not a vacation spot. 
you know, like people don't, they're not a vacation destination. And I'm not quite sure what that has to do with winning championship rings, but you know, he, that's what he said. And during the ring ceremony, he was just shooting his free throws, getting ready for the game. So he was very nonchalant, did not care about it, didn't affect him at all. Clearly, hopefully it um, encouraged him to work towards that and wanting one of those. That's, you know, everybody's reaction is different, whatever. Um, you know, he's a competitor, so he was really flippant and nonchalant about the ring ceremony, of course, rightfully so. And so, but when we come back, I'm going to discuss how the Knicks did against the Cavaliers. Um, like I said, the Cavs opened up at home and it's already kind of like you're a visiting team to the defending championship champions, you know, you can only do as much as you can, especially when you're the Knicks. So um, I, when we come back, we're going to talk about the Knicks and I want to jump into big men and how they, like I said, how the game is changing and how they're adapting and according to this past week. So you're listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline. Keep it locked here. We'll be right back. And congratulations one last time to the Cavaliers. You would think I was a Cavaliers fan, huh? Um, the way that I've been talking about them recently. But I, I'm, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a LeBron James fan. I'll say it. That's fine. But you guys, everybody knows I'm a diehard Kings fan. And tonight is actually their season opener at home in the new arena. So I'm quite excited about that. So like I said, keep it locked here. I'm going to cut it to a break. We will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Welcome back, everyone, to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and right before the break, we were discussing the Knicks and the Cavaliers. Now, the Knicks, um, okay, so you're playing against the defending champions. I get it. And of course, right now, like we assumed and rightfully so, the Cavaliers are picked to be the favorites in the Eastern Conference. Um, people are thinking perhaps a rematch with the Golden State Warriors, but we're going to get into that later um, in the episode of uh, this segment because I want to discuss what happened with Golden State and the Spurs. Now, when you're playing against the Cavaliers, I want to, and especially it's the season opener, and if you're a Knicks fan, you're wanting it to be at least a competition, right? Like, we don't want the first game. It's okay to lose the first game, and especially when you're playing against the Cavaliers at, um, you know, at the queue it's okay to lose, but to get blown out like this. So like I said, so the Cavaliers won 115-84 over the Knicks. But the thing is, the Knicks just did not look like they were together. And I know that they've been having some things going on in this off season, as well as in the preseason and training camp. They had players that were not there the whole entire time. We, we need Carmelo to be... You know, just a lot. He was in the Olympics and things like that. There's just a lot of little things that have been happening. And it it was showing. It was showing that they were not all cohesive. And it was showing that there's still some chemistry problems that they're going to have to work on. And there's still some adapting to one another, D Rose and all of that situation. And so the Knicks actually had 10 turnovers in the first four minutes of the second half. Um, that alone is not going to work. It's just not going to work. You can't have one having 10 turnovers is a lot just in general. That's a lot to have in a game, 10 turnovers. Um, that's a lot to have in a half, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll I'm, I'm okay. I actually, I'm not, I'm not okay with you having 10 turnovers in a half, but I mean, it happens, right? Like, but if you're going to start off the second half, 10 turnovers like that against the defending champions 
it's not really much we can do with all of that, okay? There's not much you can build off of um, when it comes to that. You're not going to win games having giving up that many turnovers and, you know, literally just handing the team that you're playing against opportunities to score on you and just not protecting. So, and I'm really, I, I hate turnovers. Turnovers are probably my pet peeve. Um, turning the ball over really grinds my gears. Um, it really, really does. I know everybody makes mistakes and I know that the speed of the game is fast and I know that, you know, stuff happens, but, um, turnovers really grind my gear. So when I was seeing that the Knicks had 10 turnovers in the second half, I was like, uh, yeah, what do you expect is going to happen? You're going to get blown out. That was a Cavaliers problem that they dealt with and that they just packaged up the Knicks and sent them back. So that, of course, rightfully so. Joe Kim Noah, hopefully everybody in your squad can get it together because, like I said, 10 turnovers in a half, in the beginning of a half, not even in a quarter, um, is not going to work. And then speaking of... um, random crazy shockers another shocker was which and it's it's a halfway shocker it's not a full shocker is the golden state warriors and the spurs their opener so the warriors were at home so the spurs were the visiting team okay that's fine now the spurs it's not a shocker when anybody gets beat by the spurs i don't think i really don't think that it is ever um especially in the last like what almost 20 seasons 17 seasons with pop um because they, 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 they are consistently a fundamentally sound winning team, right? And even clearly, even without Tim Duncan um, on the court, at least, they're still okay, right? They're still good. They're still a contender. People are talking about that they're getting old, but clearly it's not a problem and it's not the case. And then you have the Golden State Warriors who all... Um, preseason of course with like the Kevin Durant trade and things like that people were so excited and then they're playing at home and it's the season opener and we're excited because you want to kick start off to a really good the season to a really good start and they really dropped the ball literally they dropped the ball um they were only shooting 21 percent from the three-point line um and you know that that's kind of like all last season what the um warriors really prided themselves on was um curry and clay splash brothers all that um even draymond taking threes everybody was um you know comfortable shooting threes um but then it really showed when playing against the spurs and the spurs really took advantage of this is having andrew bogut gone now and i've talked about bogut and has um contribution to that team and what he means to that team and i've i've talked about this before and it showed it really showed so they got rid of bogut right freed up some salary cap brought duran over he's supposed to be the save well i don't want to say he's supposed to be the savior but he was supposed to be the missing link and that it was supposed to just be warriors super team everybody's been excited for it but the spurs were like we ain't worried about that so They really attacked and dug into the fact that without Bogut and his defensive rebounds and his defense inside and his size inside, um, the the Spurs really took advantage of that. And they they took advantage of the fact that they were able to out-rebound, especially on offense, the Warriors and getting a lot of those second chance shots up there. And they just blew out. Um, the Warriors at home too and so that was kind of shocking and surprising in a way like I said it's halfway shocking it's not really fully shocking because it's the Spurs but then it was one of those things where people there's I think there's been so much anticipation for this season home opener with the Warriors that people forgot like you know the Spurs are tried and true and if you're listening to this and you're like well Pauline you're a Kings fan the Kings yes our season opener at home at the Golden One Center is against the Spurs. Now, I don't know why we would want to play the Spurs in our opening of this new historic era because (laughs) I'm just hoping my Kings don't get blown out. Of course, I want them to win and of course, I want them to start off the new arena um, because this is like the official, official start. I know that they played already, but... um, this is the start of the season, and this is our home opener. They just beat the Suns 
the other day, which was a great game. But um, you want to win at home and in your new, you know, break it in, break in the new arena. And so if you're a Warriors fan, you're probably like, Pauline, what are you talking about? You guys are about to get the same treatment by the Spurs tonight, which may or may not. You know, it's true. It is true. I'll give them their dues. But hopefully my squad can compete. Hopefully we can have a, a really solid home opener. I'm hoping, of course, I'm, I want them to have a win. Of course, I don't know why you would schedule the Spurs for your first season opener of a new arena. I really do not. Um, you, you know, it's kind of like when you're in high school and you have homecoming and your football team purposely tries to schedule the weakest team in the league. And like, you know, if you are... Um, the visiting team for somebody else's homecoming that, that, that says something about your team and says that you're weak. Um, why didn't we do that? I don't know. Why would you want to play the Spurs? But then again, I guess if we win, that's a really, you know, hallmark that we're setting in stone, like a precedent that we're setting for the arena. So I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully my man Boogie and Willie, they're ready to go tonight. So um, I'm going to cut it to a break. And speaking of big guys, um, like I said, I still, I want to wrap up this episode discussing Anthony Davis, Miles Turner, um, Carl Anthony Towns, even young guy who um, is a lot of promise and that people are expecting to overshadow Anthony Davis and how Anthony Davis is responding to that and um, all of that jazz. So keep it locked here. You're listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. We will be right back. I want to discuss big man and what they are saying about this, all this talk about the change in basketball. So keep it locked here. Like I said, I'm your host, Pauline. I'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. media concepts basketball podcast we are getting ready to wrap up this episode but i wanted to talk about uh big men so now like i said when i first opened up this episode a lot of people are saying and there's been some concerns on how seven footers fit into the game of basketball now um which is something that you would never have thought like i would have never have thought that we would actually have to be worried about being too tall for basketball but like i said um a, a person that i value his of uh, his sports opinion was bringing we got into a discussion about that because i was like what do you mean being too tall for basketball because you know like like we all know the taller the better right the taller you know when you um you're closer to the rim um you as far as like shot blocking and defense that's great defense it makes it more difficult for defenders to shoot over you when you're tall and have like a long wings wingspan that's always been something of value in the game of basketball is your wingspan your vertical um how tall you are just in general i know that it's also good to be in shape and to be fast and to have a good shot and things like that but you there's always been that saying you can't teach height right so you can always teach a tall guy how to play ball how to shoot the ball how to play defense and how to run but you can't really teach a short guy to grow you can't you can't teach somebody height um and so within this last i want to say a few seasons but really um most recently there's been a lot of talk about how big guys fit into the game of basketball seven plus footers and and even six eleven guys so guys who are just centers they're not um fours they're solid fives now um this week of nba basketball this opener the like i said miles turner of the pacers anthony davis with the pels as well as carl anthony towns have 
shown us that th- it's still a big man's game. Okay. And so, um, Anthony Davis, actually, he, um, started off his opening, um, game against the Denver Nuggets, which, um, he had a historic, you know, start and basically he scored, um, 50 points that game. He had five assists, 16 rebounds and seven steals. So he was actually, um, I believe due to his blocks, he was just, um, short one of the five by five to get a five by five. And so, um, a points, assists, rebounds, steals, blocks. Okay. For, you know, it doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. Um, it's more easy to get a double, double, triple, triple double whatever but um a five by five and so getting at least five so he almost like i said had a five by five but he did um make history and being since jordan um being the first player since jordan to drop at least um 50 points in an opener so um that in itself is a big deal and of course anthony davis he was still quite upset because they lost to the nuggets despite his um amazing performance they lost the nuggets 107 102 and the reason why i'm really excited for anthony davis in this game that he just had is because you know he's been dealing with his injuries and has been dealing with um just his body not being 100 and not being 100 percent and not being able to do everything that he wants to do and it and, and clearly by a performance like this um we see why he has been um such a valuable asset to the pelicans despite the fact that he's always dealing with these injuries and things like that and then carl anthony towns now he is what a lot of people were saying was like the young version that was going to take anthony davis's spot and overshadow anthony davis especially due to the fact that davis is always dealing with injuries and is kind of iffy when it comes to just his body physically just his body not his ability not his competitiveness not his drive not his performance it's literally just his body that um is making people question him because it's like can his body do what it needs to do and can he stay injury free and so Carl Anthony Towns, he actually put up 21 points in the, his season opener. So, and you can see kind of why um, it's not a 50 point performance, but you can see why this young guy, because I think he's like, what, like 20 years old. Um, this younger, tall center is being compared to Anthony Davis and being said, um, because Anthony Davis, he's 23 now. And it's wild that we're saying that these guys are old because they're not old they're under 25 so there's still a lot of career left in them so these two guys anthony davis carl anthony towns um had great performances as well as miles turner of the pacers he's also a center who put up 30 points now and i think what the cool thing is and when we circle back to anthony davis with the five assists 16 rebounds seven steals they're doing what what's happening and what we're seeing is that big guys are not being restricted to the blocks you know they're not being restricted just to the by the hoop you have centers and guys who um seven footers shooting threes and shooting threes with ease you have them getting rebounds on defense and bringing the ball up themselves and making a play themselves you have them making passes you know assisting and opening up the floor the way a guard does and so i think what has happened is all this talk and concern that we're saying that the game of basketball is changing and that it's so fast and small ball is better and it's faster and and all of that and people's you know concern what's going to happen to the big man is it a big man sport anymore blah 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 blah, blah. um <laughs> they uh are just making big guys more of a threat because now you really don't know before you could when a big guy was out too far you know out at the shoulder um or even at the top of the you know at the top of the key it's like whoa he's way out there and stuff like that out at the corner it's like whoa um, you know, it used to be amazing when they would shoot these little outside jump shots. And I, I remember growing up, my coach would always be like, just stick a hand in her face. She's not going to make that shot. She's too far out there. And so now um, big guys and girls, you know, us big girls outside, us post players, it's nothing for somebody to just bring the ball up and be like, okay, 
nobody's open. I'm just going to shoot a three and I'm going to make it and then we're going to run back and I'm going to be able to keep up with you. So their stamina, their speed, um, it's just making them more versatile and it's making them more of a threat because now um, you you really don't know. You're not they're not limited to limited anymore just to being down low and just being. Um, you know, I call them trash picker uppers, bringing the guy that for the second chance shot, being the rebounder they, and just being a shot blocker. They're actually balling out. So um, I'm really excited to see how the evolution of the big man is going to continue and going to see how um, because they are being more agile. And you can look this up. You can just look up the plays from just this past week that the big man were putting up in some of the different plays and um just how they're performing it's, it's it's amazing and then you think about it and you're like this dude is seven two 300 pounds whatever and this is what this is how he's performing so it's really cool i'm excited to see and of course again like i said i'm excited to see anthony davis because um i am he's 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 hungry you know he's tired of being injured he's ready to ball out he's ready to play you can clearly tell that um he's he's hungry like i said 50 points in his season opener they did lose to the nuggets so even more so he's hungry because that's a chip on his shoulder he's tired of losing he wants to play he wants to carry the team so i'm very very excited to see what he's going to do and i'm also very excited like i said how the evolution of the big man is going to be because now like they are not restricted and you're able to it's okay to have a big guy out there because you know when you um there's times when you throw in the big guys or big girls whatever it is and the the, the posts and you know that the game is going to slow down because you have to slow up for your big guy to catch up you have to slow up to set, get let your big guy run all the way down to the block and get set on offense we ain't got to worry about that. That's old school. So <laughs> that's a thing of the past. And I like it that the big guys are not getting lost when it comes to like this whole wave of small ball. So you have been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. That's going to do it for this episode. You can listen to this episode again, as well as past episodes and any future episodes that we're going to be posting on our network website. That's gsmcpodcast.com as well as on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. I'm your host, Pauline, and I'm excited. Basketball season has officially begun, and we're gonna it's going to be great. It's going to be a great season. And if you were shocked in a bad way for this opener, um, this week of opening games, it's okay. It's just the beginning. <laughs> and if you were shocked, happy, um, remember, it's just the beginning. So it's going to be a lot of fun this season. You're listening to the Golden State Media Contest Basketball Podcast. I'll talk to you guys next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.